The pentatonic scale is probably the oldest and most universal scale in the scale vocabulary. We can find the pentatonic scale in the music of Africa, of Asia, and the Americas. It is an ancient scale, and it's used in popular music today. It is a five-tone scale. Penta means five, and tonic means tone. And we're going to learn today the pentatonic scale in first position, starting in the note E. It is oftentimes referred to as the E minor pentatonic scale. And this is largely because if the first note is E and the second note is G, and we measure the distance between E and G, that is a minor third. And because that is the uh, second note in an E minor chord, and B the third note, it's called an E minor pentatonic scale. If we did the same scale starting on the note G, it would be called a G major pentatonic scale. Okay, I'm sorry if I confused you, but just take my word for it. Today, we're going to learn this pentatonic scale in first position for a variety of reasons. One, many people come to me and ask me, how do you learn to, to improvise? And one of the answers you will usually get is, well, you need to know your scales. Um, the pentatonic scale being such a universal scale and using so many different types of music, and being that it's only five tones instead of the seven tones of a standard diatonic scale, is a great place to start. There are some other reasons as well, which I've mentioned in other videos. And one of those other reasons is that there's only two notes per string, so it's in some ways easier to remember uh, and memorize. Here we go. We're going to take a look at the entire scale, and then I'm going to give you a method of practice that will be focused around a set of chords, four chords. We'll start with the E minor pentatonic scale. Start in the sixth string open. That's an E. Sixth string third fret. That's a G. Fifth string open. That's an A. Fifth string second fret. That's a B. And fourth string open. That's a D. Those are the five notes of the pentatonic scale. Let's repeat. Let's do that one more time. I welcome you to join me. Two, three, four, E. Now G, third fret, fifth string open A, fifth string second fret B, fourth string open D. The next five notes of the scale are the same letter names. They're an octave above. An octave is eight tones above. So whenever we go eight tones above, we have the same letter name, and essentially we have the same note. Um, essentially, the frequency is twice as fast when we move up the scale. So whatever E is, twice as fast as this E is this E. And twice as fast as this E is this E. So with that in mind, we're going to start on the fourth string now and do the second octave. So we're gonna go from this E to the first string open, starting on the fourth string, second fret, E, third string open, G, third string, second fret, A, second string open, B, second string, third fret, D. And if we kept on going and repeated the first note, we'd have E again. Now let's break that up into those two parts. We'll do the sixth to the fourth, E to D, and then the fourth to the first, E to E. We'll add that extra E. Ready? Sixth string, open. Sixth string, third fret, G. Open A. B, second fret. Open D. Second octave, E, fourth string, second fret. Third string, open G. Third string, second fret, A. Second string, open B. Second string, third fret, D and one more E on the first string open. Great. Now, in our strategy of practicing this scale and learning it, I've got four chords that will be a part of our learning experience. Because the second problem is, 
when to use the scale or how to use the scale when you are playing an actual piece of music. So when you're playing an actual piece of music, you have chords. And frequently, it is trying to tie the tones of the scale to the tones that are part that represent part of the chord. So the first chord we're going to play will be an E minor chord. The second chord is going to be a G chord. The third chord is going to be an A minor chord. And the last chord in the set is a B7 chord. And then it'll come right back to E minor. Two, three, four G chord. Two, three, four A minor chord. Two, three, four B7 chord. Two, three, four. Okay, and if you practice that, that'll be very helpful. You can separate these two things and you can combine them. So the two things that we're going to focus on is the chord and the second thing is the scale. So how are we going to do the scale? How are we going to make this a melody? How are we going to make it something that we can put these two things together? Well, I've composed a scale and then we're going to sequentially repeat the scale at different pitches. Let me demonstrate. When we play the E minor chord, we'll start on the note E. When we play the G chord in the second measure, we'll start on the note G. And in the third measure, we'll start on the note A for the E minor chord. And the fourth measure, we'll start on the note B. We will play all five tones of the pentatonic scale. So the first five tones of the pentatonic scale will go from E to D. was E, G, A, B, D. E, G, A, B, D. Okay. The second five notes of the pentatonic scale in that sequence will start on the note G this time. It'll be the same scale, but we'll start on the note G and we'll end on the note E. So it'll go G, A, B, D, E. There you go. And the next one will start on the note a, A, B, D, E, G, and the last one for the B seventh chord will start on the note B. Excellent. And what we're going to do is I'm going to play the chord and then we'll do that scale. The scale will have a rhythm. Uh, there will be a rest on beat one for the strum chord. One. And starting on beat two, two and three and four. So the scale will start on the second beat of each measure. The chord will be on the first beat. So first beat, second beat, first beat, second beat, first beat G chord, second beat, practice this a couple times using just the bass strings. Then after we've done that, we'll practice doing the same thing on the fourth string to the second, starting on E, starting on G for the G chord, starting on A for the A minor chord, and B for the last one, but we're going to run out of notes. You want to do the last note, it'll be A on the first string, fifth fret. So you have to slide up. That's the only real tricky part. Okay, let's first do the bass strings and then we'll switch starting on the fourth string. Are you ready? Get your chord. Now, you don't have to play the chords. If you're finding you're still negotiating the chords, just work on the chords. And if you find that you're still working on the scale, then just do the scale. But eventually, you can combine these two things together. Okay, let's get it ready. One, two, three, four, E minor, E, G chord, G, A minor, A, B, B, G, B7, B, repeat, E minor, Seven. 
second fret, E minor chord, E, G, A minor, E seventh, repeat, E minor. Excellent. So this gives you a little bit of a, a method of linking the scale, that whole scale, to a chord progression, E minor G, A minor B7. And the pattern of this scale we'll learn in another class that will follow this one in five positions across the fretboard of the guitar. But it's the best thing to start with the idea of the doing this pentatonic scale just in first position and trying to tie the scale with the chords. Uh, now, why did I suggest this? Uh, the reason is oftentimes when you're trying to tie chords with melody, it's trying to identify what note is the first one that you want to start on or end on that will match the chord. So it sounds like you're playing the right notes. And I think that this is a good place to start. It's not the only way that you can do this. It is just one way. And I'm hoping that you will give me some feedback on this video afterwards uh, on how successful you were able to, to apply this and start to get comfortable, one with the scale and tying it in with this chord progression, which comes up in a lot of the various different pieces. Okay, now having said all this, I'm going to recommend one other thing, and that is experiment with sometimes articulation, like we've struck every one of those notes. But at the beginning of this video, I also played the same scale with hammer on. So you're striking a note and slurring, doing an ascending slur. And especially as you pick up the tempo on this, it might be easier to be doing rather than striking every one of those notes. And you can try that out as you get more comfortable with it. Let's try it once on the bass strings and see if you can kind of try this. You're striking an open string and then hammering down with the finger. Open string, hammer down. And the fifth note in this case will be open and so you don't have another note to hammer on. Yeah, But whenever possible, hammer on to an open string to a fretted note. Okay. Let's try it once. Ready? G, uh, E minor chord. G chord. A minor. B chord. Yes, maybe you found that, hey, that might actually be pretty cool. If you're playing the blues, if you're doing this, with the intent of making it sound like blues, then sometimes doing a vibrato, as you probably noticed I did, or bending a note will be stylistically a nice additional thing to, uh, to practice on. The other thing that you can practice on when you're doing this scale is looking for patterns. So here's a simple one where you go up three notes and back one. So if you do E, G, A, G, A, B, A, B, D, E, D, E. You go backwards. As you practice doing this uh, slowly at first, this is actually maybe a little faster than what you felt comfortable with now, but if you practice this enough, you'll get faster at it and you can kind of decide when you might want to stick a pattern like that in a piece of music. I'll try to demonstrate again just a little bit of what we just did and end with uh, a little bit of improv.
I hope this video is helpful to you. Uh, give me some feedback maybe in the comments below what you found helpful, what you had questions on. I look forward to hearing that. Okay, here we go.